right. Hello, Eva and Tren. How are you both today? Fantastic. Great. Good, good. Um, so um, Abigail came out about a month ago at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. So just how has everything been over the past month now that people are watching it? I'm sure you've gotten some feedback on it. The feedback's been really cool. Like I, I know a lot of people have been saying that they really like um, Abigail and Lucas's rapport. So that's been really fun. Um, yeah, I, I've been loving it. What about you, Trent? Um, I've been showing it to all my family. And, you know, uh, a lot of them been, you know, they're like, okay, I heard it came out. We're going to watch it. And every single time, everybody's loving it. Great reviews, great reviews. People love it. And, um, yeah, it was an exciting process. Everything's exciting. It's a really fun movie. Yeah. I, I think that it's just like, it is scary, but it's also just really fun <laughs> to watch. So it's <laughs> nice to hear that. And, like, I don't know, like, when we were when we were in the theater and it was the premiere, yeah, yeah, it got yeah. more laughs than I thought. Just because I was like, you know, obviously some of it's funny to me because it's like <laughs> personal, but I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, people are having fun. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was, hilarious. that was hilarious. It was, it was very good. And I, you know, we had good, great chemistry. Everybody had great chemistry. So when there was a joke or when there was a moment that people needed, you know, you you would see, okay, this is how they should react to it. They reacted to it exactly, you know, how we would, you know, because we were there, but they they loved it, you know. That was good. Sure. Yeah, it's definitely a thriller, but it's a little campy. And it's also kind of adorable, like your friendship as it progresses gets a little psychotic at the end, but. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah it's it true. Yeah. It gets a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would go scary. <laughs> <laughs> so now I would love to hear just how both of you came to be involved in this project and also what made you want to be involved in the film. Okay. Uh, for me, like this, is it was really exciting when we actually got to film it because we both, oh no, wait. Yeah, okay, so, so I got attached to the project before the pandemic. And then it was like, it, and then it picked back up after because everything was kind of on pause. So for me, it was kind of a lot of like waiting and and hoping for it to like happen. And when it did, it was just really exciting because it was just a very long wait in between getting attached to the project, getting um, booked for it, and then actually filming it. Um. I actually got the audition through my acting coach. Um, they they asked, you know, for someone uh, like me and, um, well, just actually anyone in general. And um, she, I woke up to like, I, I got woken up by my auntie, who was my uh, agent and manager at the time. And she was like, it was like five in the morning. She was like, wake up. I'm like, what happened? She's like, you have an audition, get it now. And I had to do a, a bathroom crying scene. That was the first thing that I had to do. Yeah, so I put, you know, a little uh, little sink water on my eyes and I pretended to cry. <laughs> it's such a dramatic scene. Like, that. I wasn't there for that day when you filmed it. But, like, I, I know I heard that your audition was amazing. But then, like, ooh, that scene in the movie is so intense. It's definitely, like, a really, like, it's one of those real emotional parts of yeah. the film. And like what drew me to Abigail is that she's so uh, kind of inhuman. And mm -hmm. then Lucas is the human part of the film. He's just yeah. like kind of centers it a little bit, I think. Oh and then God. Abigail is just like taking it to really crazy places. <laughs> yeah, that's a balance. 100%. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Lucas never saw her coming. <laughs> no, no, he was worried about you know uh the uh, western 70s stuff you know uh you know uh alabama stuff i don't know what you know you know alabama not serial killer stuff yeah not anything but that that was the last <laughs> thing on his mind. yeah <laughs> all right so now eva i know you've had you know, some credits before you were in the Haunted Hathaways and other projects. But um, Trin, was this kind of your first big acting gig? Yes, very much so. Very much so. That was the, I did um a, maybe a commercial and a reality show. 
but um that was my first anything with lines so that's why i'm very grateful to have ava in the cast because they they helped me so much like beyond record. a true like, natural at it yeah that's because i had other nat. you know see when you're <laughs> around naturals it's like you you can cut you can feel comfortable in it you mm. know that's that was it but i felt grateful to have you as a scene partner i think that like we just really uh settled into our roles really well and had like yeah. a good back and forth yeah yeah it, it, you did great thank you you did great <laughs> you both did um so now eva you um when I spoke with your dad last month about executive producing on the film, he said that you play crazy very well. <laughs> and I love that. What is it like just getting into character with these kind of unhinged individuals? Uh, I think it's a lot more fun for me than playing somebody who's similar to me. I want to play somebody who's... Um, uh, a challenge that could be that could be anybody but it, it does usually end up being crazy people um yeah when I, I remember I was on set and then there's uh someone one of the crew on set he was like yeah I don't even know if I could really like see you playing like sweet innocent like convincingly I just really like you as crazy and I was like <laughs> hopefully that's not doesn't have to do with me that's just um what I am really drawn to as an actor. So, so maybe that's, that's why, um, Abigail was hard because Abigail doesn't really have like, like empathy. She's definitely, um, lacks a lot of things that normal, uh, that most people have. And that, that made it hard to understand her intention because her intention is kind of always like a manipulation tactic and Obviously, I'm not kind of going around my life thinking about how I can manipulate every single person I can talk to. Abigail is. So that made um, playing her not intuitive um, and a challenge. And it was really it was really fun. And I definitely like playing crazy and I want to keep playing crazy. Crazy is fun. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> And so now both of your characters have really kind of complicated relationships with their respective mothers. Can you talk about just what it was like bringing those relationships to li to life? Okay. Um. So the person that played my mother was Karima, and you know, I I got loving I got a loving mother. So you know, I think um, it was good that the first time. No, no, actually if I'm not mistaken, the first time I met her was the bathroom scene. So the first time we met, she was going off of me. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's scary. But after, you know, she uh, she was like, okay, good job. And it was very normal. But with the whole scenes with the mother, you know, Lucas and his mother, they are two hurt people, you know? His dad left him and she, you know, she satisfies by gratifying you know she goes to other men and things like that so the relationship between them is very much of a kind of a love hate but more hate than love you know you gotta watch the movie so you know but it's it's definitely a, a hate love relationship and um it's just a lot of pain between them you know but yeah 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 i it's kind of the same with they they both have kind of similar but different relationships with their their parents mm -hmm. um abigail especially their their moms and abigail she she has a hate relationship with her mother and her mother has a love hate relationship with her and yeah abigail doesn't really see her as her mom but um you know obviously a mother with that kind of child is like really struggling with how to handle it and feels really lost and I think that um the the parent and child relationship scenes were some of like the most emotional and were high points for me filming like I really liked filming with um Hermione the woman who played my mom she was really really talented and uh there's just like a really high intensity to those like just the the emotions are 
are very high and it's very complicated and and yeah and I mean I think that's kind of like the the human the human part of it and there's there's an imbalance between her mom it's kind of human and then Abigail is I don't know it doesn't really seem very human in those interactions so I think that they're really fun they're really fun to act and they're also they're also hard and like emotionally draining especially for Hermione <laughs> Mm -hmm. so now um those were pretty emotional scenes to film but I'd love to talk more about kind of the more violent scenes <laughs> without <laughs> giving anything crazy away I mean I love the scene where I guess this is okay to say where Abigail beats up Lucas's bullies just what was it like bringing those to life <laughs> <laughs> those are so fun um I know I I think Trent and I had a lot of fun doing the like the stunt training. Uh you did some cool stuff. I did some cool stuff. Um it was fun to learn how to do it. It was all like choreographed and um yeah, that scene was really fun. There was just like such a such a intensity to it and and uh like I hadn't done a lot of stunt training like that before. So I think that like the rehearsals of that and then putting it into action and and doing it like having like a physical challenge it was really fun and and um abigail was in her element for sure <laughs> um you know i got beat up most of the time but i will say you know it was fun watching abigail beat people up because then it was like yeah i got my revenge um now bear with me i had this really violent scene where i was punching bread Right. I think that was my favorite, uh, my favorite action stunt thing that I did was when I punched left hook to right hook and yap yap the bread. I think that was my favorite, uh, my favorite violent one, in my opinion. Loved that. That was such a good moment. Yeah, I tore that bread up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And Tren, how cool was it for you to see your character kind of come out of his shell? And he's really a different person by the end of this. Mm. It was, I was very proud of, well, okay. I, I'm against murder and violence, but I was really proud of Lucas. You know, I, um, it, you know, life is about standing up. He's the, well, you know, Abigail made him stand a little bit too, up, but he, you standing up to the people that you know are bullies you know um i think you know the movie a good a good um a good what's the word called a good um point is uh stand up to the bullies now you know don't kill them but stand your ground where you are and i think lucas the change in lucas you know not only was he mean to abigail but he became you know softer he started you know messing with her and um he also stood up to his mom, you know, little things like that, you know, stood up to the bullies, you know, um, just seeing him get, you know. Some confidence. Confidence. There you go. Yeah, that's that's the word. Confidence. Yeah. He got yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah he, <laughs> it went really far, didn't it? Yeah, Lucas, Lucas kind of uh, didn't stop having confidence after a while. He kind of just was like, yeah, right on. People though, like like kind of going a little bit back to the reception is people really are rooting for Abigail and Lucas yeah. and like the not the bullies. It was almost funny to me because I was like, wait, like they're kind of the bad guys a little, yeah. little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you yeah. get so sucked into Abigail and Lucas's world where you're rooting for them, even though when even though when they start doing horrible things, because you really feel for Lucas and somehow you feel for Abigail too and you're rooting for him yeah you know that's what makes you a, a great actress because I was rooting for Abigail I was actually rooting, like I was like yeah Abigail you got this like come on that's yeah that's how you make it oh, thank you <laughs> yeah no and they are likable and it's not like they're just kind of going after random strangers I feel like it sounds horrible everyone who gets it kind of deserves it a little bit <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Yeah. It did deserve it. I think so. Yeah. Um, and so now this movie it takes place, it's like the 70s, right? Yeah. That era. What was it like kind of traveling back, wearing the clothes, just being in that era? Okay, so the first time that we met in person was when we were uh 
tr like clothing like shopping with the wardrobe Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Yeah, and we were we were in LA and we were um going to like all the cool vintage stores and like trying on like authentic 70s clothes which is what like our characters were mostly in all of it was authentic Yeah. the majority of it was all from the 70s and i love how it was like color coded too like abigail wears a lot of red lucas wears a lot of blue and purples and then he does kind of start wearing some red as abigail corrupts him um but like yeah it, it was really fun wearing those clothes what what about you try and Um, you know, when we, it was funny because when we uh went to the shop, you know, Lucas is a little bit less, he's financially stable. His family's a little bit less financially, he's poor. And um, he was at the house, we were at the, the shop and I just remember they was like, okay, so you're gonna have to try on smaller clothes. And I'm already like a skinny mini. So when I, I remember trying on, and these are 70 small clothes. So if they're small, they're small. I just remember hearing, I'm like, Oh no, this isn't good. Yeah. So on the seventh, you know, going back in that time, it was very, very cool to see all the cars and to see like just the everybody wear specific 70s clothes. And um I tried a 70s um country accent. I tried it. Oh, it was I good. tried uh, I tried it, <laughs> but I thank you. I'll take that. You know, I'm I'm my own worst critic, but um everything. was very accurate because i did do a lot of research and everything i i didn't do like the stuff but everybody that they had us in every item that we had was very it was very accurate and it really did feel like time travel it was very cool very It cool did. It, it, it's like I love a good stylized movie like like when you do like a period piece and you go back to just any era and you commit to it um definitely like appreciate the wardrobe definitely appreciate like all the props all the just set design it it's very immersive it's immersive as an actor and it's immersive as a viewer so I really like that aspect of Abigail Yeah, 100%. Um, and then Ava, I'd love to ask you, what was it like just having your dad on set as a producer? It was really fun. Yeah, um, he did a great job as a producer. Uh, he's he's like such a business, I don't know, he's very, um, he's good at the business side of it. And, and he was doing that and I was doing the acting side of it. And And when I was a kid, he would, you know, always support me and help me on set and and help me with my lines and guide me. And, and he did that for so long that uh, by the time I was filming Abigail, um, we were doing our work pretty separately. Like I was <laughs> like, I don't know, like it was it was definitely a different experience, like being an adult actor, too. Um, but also getting to have like my core support system, my dad there. Um, just as like the, uh, just as the emotional support, I think, just because we were both so busy doing our own jobs, but kind of just having him there was, um, was really cool. And also like, I kind of got to understand the business side of it a little bit more, or the just like the producing side of it. And, and um, that made that a really cool experience. Also, a little a little Easter egg for any all the viewers. He's in the movie, so find him. Yeah, you gotta find him. He's in it <laughs> with some seventies facial hair. With some seventies facial hair. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Least favorite part of the seventies, the crazy <laughs> hair. <laughs> like, what was going on? <laughs> uh, again, like really cool, very stylized aspect of it. Like Gene, Gene Farber who plays my dad. He yes. also. 70s facial hair it was very cool another behind the scenes easter egg my yeah. my dad did a lot of the uh, the the beard shaping oh <laughs> do you remember that Dude, i didn't even know that yeah because we were in like the wilderness and there wasn't like a mirror so oh we needed some help that was that was that was good that was good he did a great job <laughs> right <laughs> So no, the movie, it ends, um, again, without giving too much away, if anyone hasn't seen it, kind of open-ended, room for more storyline. Um, could you see you guys revisiting these characters? And if so, what would you look for in a sequel? I mean, I say yes, absolutely. What about you? I would love it. I would like, 
I would like as long I would like to see, you know, what happens after. I would also like to know the story between what happened before. I would really like to know that, you know, what Yeah, a little prequel. you know, that would that would be really nice. Yeah. But Yeah. I'd love to do, you know, I'd I'd love to work with David again. That would be fun. Ditto. Yeah. I, I'd love to work with you again. I, I really like to explore what happens after with uh Abigail Lucas because you know, Abigail really kind of corrupted him and brought him to the dark side. And I, I wanna see like, do they both lean into that? Do they both just go like full crazy? Or does Lucas uh like is it gonna be abigail versus lucas type of thing i think both of them Oh, my gosh. personally as a viewer I, like i don't know maybe just because i'm very in tune with abigail and how kind of she does have that like just very carelessness in her where she doesn't care about people i do understand that and so i have a hard time relating to other viewers that are like woohoo abigail just because i'm Yeah. like She's so awful. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I mean, I get it, but I, I also do feel that way. So I kind of feel like Tren is the human aspect of it. So like a Tren, uh, not Tren, <laughs> and a Lucas versus Abigail with him like realizing like, oh, she's a, she's a murderer. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I don't want to do this. Uh, I think that could be super interesting. That's like another, because they're, they're kind of having a power struggle the whole movie. You know, so to continue with that would be cool. I uh I um you know I been Lucas like I've been playing Lucas in his head for so long that I kind of was thinking oh yeah Abigail 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 messes with Lucas I it keeps it goes right over my head she's like a stone cold she don't care I you know it, it Maybe I got she does. my I don't yeah you know when someone know. is I don't know if she's a psychopath a sociopath but whatever she is. You know, don't mean if once Lucas, once Lucas is not on her good side, I'm sure, I'm sure she's gonna be like, It's I true. don't need you anymore. You know, once that's you know, but you know, the question of can she, can he beat up Abigail? I don't know. I, I, I can't. Trent can't. I don't know about Lucas, but Abigail's scary. I, I don't know. You know, she got the the, the moves and she hits you
High Top. Fifth scary movie. Oh. That was the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Dead like I'm a I'm a horror buff. Like I I watch every horror movie. Well, I stopped because you know now they they stop getting real gory. Now they just hit you with jump scare, and then you think you're safe, and then they hit you with another one, and you're like, hmm, that was very scary. And then you got hit with another. I can get away because I definitely uh, turned them off mid. You know, I they're too scary. Yeah, for me. can't get through it. Yeah, what? No, yeah. lights Far out is super uh psychological. Mm. I, I think that, like if I think anybody could be a fan of horror, it just depends on like what kind you like, like yeah. psychological or like kind of the realistic, like paranormal, like we were talking about, um, campy, campy horrors, which yeah. I would say Abigail fits in that category. I like a good campy horror, especially okay, now. Uh, thriller horrors. I really like thriller hor horrors. Like I don't know. Like I feel like thriller is kind of we can kind of put that under the umbrella. I'm a little bit of a scaredy cat, so <laughs> I'm like a big fan of like American Psycho or like Gone Girl or Nightcrawler, like those. I don't. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, does that fit in the horror category? I don't know. I just think that those have really good um performances, so I'm definitely drawn to those. What about you? Like, <laughs> look, hold on, look, hold on. Yeah. Look. Oh my god. That's <laughs> but, amazing. Uh yeah, I've got I got this at I forgot, but I made it. But okay. Um, you know, I like for Abigail, for instance, you know, uh even that, and you know, I think I might be a scaredy cat too, because there was one scene I ain't saying that actually got me good. I'm not gonna lie. I got good, like that guy. I got got. Like I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hold y'all. But uh, yeah. I I think you mentioned American Psycho. That was a good one. That was a really good one. I like those as well. The you know especially you know the classics like Hannibal. Um, you know things like that. So uh, I've even watched the New Evil Dead. I think that was that was nice as well. Um, I can't get into the Conjuring. No, I can't. Man, yeah, that's. Some things is too real. I, I like, you know, I have nightmares and then I don't want to be scared of the dark. Lights out made me scared of the dark. So thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <Honestly same. laughs> yeah, those are those realistic horrors that you're like, oh, too real. Yeah. Too yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Oh, no. Good. And apparently the conjuring, I read somewhere that there was like creepy stuff happening on set to so the actors. I said, no, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Same with the exorcist. Yes. Something, yeah, that they started getting <laughs> it got them all. Everybody, everybody got got, you know? It gets scary. Scary, <laughs> scary. That's crazy. Yeah, right. Yeah. <sighs> all right, guys. Well, our Zoom time is almost up. It's yelling at me here. Um, did you have any just Final words, maybe for anyone who hasn't seen Abigail yet, why should they watch it? Because it's Abigail. Watch it. It's the best movie ever. And if you if you, if you don't watch it, that means you don't like school and you don't like me and Ava. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really fun movie. It's fun. It's it's uh it's got something for everybody. It's definitely like a great. I don't know. I think it's a great horror movie for, for younger people, too, that it's, like, maybe their first horror. Um, of course, good for, like, all horror fans. Um, yeah. It's really fun. It's a wild ride. Yeah. Um, it definitely brings something new to the table. And I think it's a refreshing thing, you know. Uh, a lot of things you would see the same, the same, the same. So this is new. And uh, I think if you want to watch something new, if you want to be refreshed, if you want to have something to enjoy, because it's if you want to laugh because there's funny things, it has everything that you need and everything that's going to fill you up and give you satisfy your, your movie buff, you know, needs. So definitely watch it. Exactly.